Hello, Lisa here. Today I wanted to talk about a bit of the neuroscience of coaching. I think a lot of coaches are really interested in how the neuroscience fits with the coaching competencies, and I want to try and take a little bit of a look at that today. The research that I am basing this conversation on is the research of Richard Boyatzitz and Anthony Jack coming out of the Case Western Reserve University. They did a study in 2018 on the neuroscience of coaching. And so that research is really what is the foundation of the conversation that we're going to have today. I would like to just sort of share a little bit about how they went about getting their research. They had a number of participants, I want to say 20, I'm not looking at the research right now, but about 20 participants. And each participant received two sorts of coaching. One was focused on personal vision for what they wanted for their future. And the other was much more focused on the challenges, what was getting in the way, what they faced in order to meet expectations. And then after they experienced each sort of coaching, they went through a series of answering questionnaires, um, coming back, it was later, um, a week, two weeks later, doing um, fMRIs as they listened to clips from their own coaching sessions from each of the different versions of the coaching session that they went through, as well as interviews, as well as surveys. So it gives you a little bit of a glimpse as to how they got this information. And I think that's really important because oftentimes we can see a certain type of coaching working well with one client, and then we don't do this a different kind of coaching with the same client to see how their brain responds to that. And it's a really uh, lovely way of getting a sense of the two ways, how they impact one person, which I think is really important. And so what they found was there are really two different ways that you can coach. And the first way is this positive emotional attractor, which is really you're focused on the positives um, and the capacity of the person moving towards their vision. They call it coaching with compassion. And then there's this negative emotional attractor. And really the attraction is well, how is the client feeling, right? And, and this is really more where we're doing coaching for compliance is what they, they talk about. So what they found in their research was that the, the participants all appreciated the time of the coaches and they felt like they got benefit from the coaching. And so that's awesome. I think that's what we see with coaching often. But with the coaching that was around the positive emotion attraction, what they noticed in the fMRIs was a greater engagement in the brain areas associated with motivation. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? People were more likely to perceive themselves within the situation in a more empowered way. They were more able to have the capacity to open up for ideas, to see things in new creative ways, and to see more possibilities. They also felt that the coaching was much more inspirational, and there was a higher degree of trust and safety in the positive emotional attraction, right? That type of coaching. What they noticed in the negative emotional attractor coaching was that the coaching was perceived to be more judgmental. And what they saw was there was greater activity in those regions of the brain associated with the sympathetic stress response. And so they noticed what was happening was the, the brain regions associated with stress, with um, feeling self-conscious, with self-judgment, feeling judged by external forces, which which of course did not lead to the client feeling the same level of motivation, but rather instigated um, more negative emotions in the client and feeling judged, having this sense of there's an obligation, they need to do something different, increased their stress and also increased their defensive responses and decreased their motivation. And I think this is really important because one of the things in the study that was really enlightening and I think really important is that most coaches 
Um, we, we come to coaching because we really want to be of service to our clients. We want to help them have sustainable changes. And yet if what we're doing is we are, we are just really stressing the outcome and, and staying at that level of what did you do? Why didn't you do that? What is stopping you from doing this? And we have this really negative emotional perspective and that's our focus even though those can be really useful questions they have the the counterintuitive byproduct of maybe shutting down motivation ownership and moving into being more capable of creating sustainable change so so here you go you're talking with your coach your coach is focused on what actions you have or haven't taken. The coach is really focused in that direction. They're asking you what got in your way, what your challenges are. They may be asking you things like, why do you think that is? And why didn't you follow through with what you said you were going to do in this last week? Because coaches are often about accountability. And yet what that tends to do then is really start to trigger these stress hormones and chemicals within the brain. And as soon as these things start flying out of your amygdala and hippocampus, what ends up happening traditionally is your brain is like, oh no. And that really takes this whole frontal cortex of your brain offline. And as that happens, your capacity to really be creative or even to think through what it is that you want to say is diminished. And I think that's really important to pay attention to if you're a coach. Because obviously the goal in coaching is that we are supporting our client to have sustainable changes. So let me talk to you a little bit about the findings. So whether or not the coaching is being delivered by a professional coach or some form of helper, guidance, coach, office manager, parent, teacher, doctor, therapist, I mean, it really doesn't matter. What these results are really suggesting is the best way to light up your client's brain that will lead to sustained effort in learning, in change, and, um, and really engage sustainable changes within their life, what your clients need is to have a sense of vision and a sense of their dreams or aspirations is where we're moving towards. And one of the ways that the core competencies really help with a coach having these kind of conversations is we're really not only talking about what is the topic that the client is bringing to the conversation, we're really talking about what's important about it. What is meaningful? What's driving that to the surface right now for them? And where do they want to be going with it? Like, how do they then take what is driving the importance of this conversation to linking it to where they want to be going in the future so that they take their insights, they take their awarenesses, and they're able to perceive them in a forward direction, right? And you know, I think for many coaches, we start with the problems and the challenges that the individual is facing. We can get very focused on the situation. I don't know very many people who have absolute control over their situation. We can get into these places of feeling really stuck. And the problem with that stuck place is that from that place, we may find our clients are sort of looping around that. Um, and it's shutting down their capacity to think outside of it. If you've ever had a coaching session with a client where they cannot do any kind of internal assessment or build insight and awareness because they're so fixated on the problem, you can see that that capacity of those frontal lobes to be online and to allow that person the capacity to have creative thinking around how they're interacting with the situation they find themselves in, it's a great example. And it can be a very stuck place for a coach to find themselves. Um, and so it is really shifting this idea of how we create sustainable change. I think it is a real shift from being a helpful coach where we are maybe 
just, I want to help you. I want to fix this problem to where do you really want to go? And really bringing the client back to their own vision and asking them, you know, as we look through the different competencies, not only is there establishing and maintaining agreements, there's also cultivating trust and safety and having a co-creative process, uh, partnership with your client. And so asking them, you know, you've named this thing and you've named this other place as a direction you want to go. How would you like to explore getting there? What is it we haven't explored that would be really important to name in order to get you there? And so the coach is really utilizing these core competencies of listening, listening to emotional shifts. I noticed you seem to get really excited as you were talking about that. What are you noticing for yourself? Or I had a client not that long ago, um, I, she said something and I asked her a question and she went, I don't know what that face meant, right? So I said, oh, wow, what was that face you just made? She says, that's the face I make when my mind is blown. I never would have guessed that. So by asking her that, then I could go, tell me more about this mind-blowing uh, awareness you just had. So then we're also anchoring the learning, which really leads us into facilitating client growth because that is what makes coaching so impactful for people is if we can really support them staying in that brain space of open-minded, open to possibilities, in a happy, creative, opportunistic, really, mindset where we can start to see possibilities and opportunities that might be on the horizon based on our self-awareness of ourself within the experience that we find ourselves, that's really, that's really where coaching can shine. So I hope this was useful and I appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, please share, but also please leave your comments below. I'd love to hear them. If you have any, you know, topics that you would enjoy hearing about, please let me know. I'd be happy to do my best. Cheers.